Hey folks, Jamie here. Thank you for tuning in. Before we get started, I would like for you to take a moment and go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Maybe leave a comment. If you're really feeling generous, maybe share this video to your social media feeds. What that does is make it a lot easier for other people to find a moment of Tiki. I really appreciate it and it helps out a lot. Thanks. Now, on with the show. Welcome to another episode of A Moment of Tiki coming to you from Lagoon of Mystery, my home tiki bar here in Central Texas. Today I'm going to talk about bamboo. Uh, some of you who have been around for a while remember that the very first episode I ever did, I focused on bamboo. But that was, what, 45, 46 episodes ago? It's been a long time and I've learned a lot since then. So if you are someone who is going to harvest and treat and use your own bamboo, uh, some of the information I found is some of the information that you need to know if you don't already. So let's go on and learn together. Okay, here we are in the bamboo grove that I get the majority of my bamboo from, which I harvest uh, live. Uh, because of the harsh, harsh uh, winter weather we had last year, last February, it's, uh, there's a lot of dead bamboo. There's a lot of dead, th the thickest culms are, you know, dead, uh, turned brown and gray. Now you can use dead bamboo um, that's not green and thriving. I don't like to use it uh, because it's more difficult to burn evenly when you're doing the, the torch treatment. But uh, as long as it's not starting to turn gray, if it's still kind of a uniform tan color, you could probably use it. Uh, I'm gonna see what I can find over here. I think there's a potential uh, comb right over there. Okay, found a comb right here. It's about an inch and a half in diameter, which is generally the minimum that I'm looking for. I'm not really sure how old it is. Uh, bamboo culms, when they grow up, they grow up with their width established and the inside of the uh, culm itself thickens over the span of four or five years until it reaches maturity and dies, and they also grow taller. <clears throat> the best time to harvest bamboo is in the winter in North America when they're not growing, they're dormant, so they're not sucking up, wicking up moisture, water, nutrients, that sort of thing. Um, or if you live in a environment where it is uh, like a monsoon season, uh, then you want to focus on harvesting bamboo when it's the dry season and it's not normally uh, growing. Basically, you don't want it actively grown. Now, when you cut bamboo, you want to cut it above the node. See, here's uh, several, there's a small node there and a larger node here. Uh, you want to cut it above the node. The nodes themselves are solid wood, but the knuckles in between here, these joints are hollow. So if you would cut below the node, say right here, this hollow section could fill up with water uh, during passing rains and become a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So you definitely want to try and cut this as close to the node as possible. There's a small node right here, so I'm going to try and cut through that. I use a Fisker folding pruning saw. I find this works very well for bamboo. And you can 
see very shallow node right there so it's not going to hold much in the way of water for mosquitoes. Huh. One of the side effects of last February's freeze where it got down into the single digits, uh, it killed a bunch of the bamboo columns here, but certainly the thicker and more mature ones, and that prompted the root systems of the bamboo to send up a whole bunch of new growth most of the new growth is fairly small, less than an inch in diameter, but it's packed in very densely. So it's making it difficult to move uh, the bamboo columns when they rise at the height or the diameter that they initially move out of the ground. That's the diameter they're gonna have their entire life. They're not gonna continuously get thicker like a, a tree or something because bamboo is a uh, type of grass, a monocot. Uh, that means my bamboo harvesting is going to be hampered for the next few years until it starts putting up, this grove starts putting up uh, thicker, uh, more robust culms. It's also harder to move around. There's all the dead culms impeding passage plus all the uh, small new ones too. So it's, it's pretty dense in here. Once you've harvested your bamboo, you can let it dry for a couple of weeks or so, but it's best to start treating it sooner rather than later. Unfortunately, as you can see, uh, this was the green one that I harvested. Uh, it's much later than later rather than sooner. I've let them sit in the garage for a couple of months and this one's starting to dry out. So I want to hurry up and get these treated so I can torch this one and have that good uh, green to brown effect show up pretty prominently. <clears throat> Since my initial video on using bamboo, I've learned uh, some important things. Uh, first of all, uh, Bamboo Ben, the great tiki bar designer uh, based in California, asked me what I was doing to prevent bamboo mites. And bamboo mites, what's this? And he sent me some videos. Bamboo mites are an Asian species of insect. They're very small. They lay their eggs inside bamboo and the eggs hatch, produce many more bamboo mites that live on the bamboo, burrow into it, lay eggs, and the cycle repeats and repeats, and they can become an infestation. Uh, just totally ruining uh, any type of bamboo work and even infest other types of wood. Flame treating alone will not effectively kill bamboo mites or their eggs. So what we need to do is uh, fill these and soak them with a borax solution. I'm gonna show you how to do so. Bamboo, <clears throat> grows with nodes and each node has a solid piece of wood sealing off the node from the rest of the bamboo. To effectively soak the bamboo with the borax solution that we're going to make, which will effectively kill the bamboo mites, we're going to use this highly technical piece of equipment known as rebar. This is just simple $5 piece of steel and I'm going to show you how we are going to use it to punch holes through the bamboo. Each section of bam, each column of bamboo has a whole bunch of nodes. So what we want to do is use this rebar to punch holes all the way through the rebar, except for the very last one. We want to keep the very last one intact so that the borax fluid solution we're gonna pour in here will be contained. So in order to do that, we're going to take the rebar, lay it against the bamboo, have it reach through the second to last node, and then with blue tape, Mark the rebar so we know not to go beyond. Going to brace the, re the uh, bamboo 
against something sturdy like a fence or a brick. This bamboo wood is not terribly strong, especially at the nodes. So you can normally just punch through it with a good whack. There we go. And the next, and the next. Give it a good shove. And I've reached my blue marker, so I'm not going to punch it in any farther. Now we have the bamboo comb that's been hollowed out all the way down to the last comb, and it's still solid, so this will readily hold liquid. Now we're going to stand the poles upright so we can pour the fluid down from the top, and this will act as a cylinder to hold the fluid, the borax solution in place so it can kill the bugs and render the bamboo safe for use in your home. Uh, notice I have the bamboo resting on a paver stone. That's because we don't want it resting on the ground where it can wick up moisture or have creepy crawlies get more readily access to it. To hold these in place, all I'm doing is taking just a little wire and loop it around here and just a little quick twist. And that will be sufficient to hold these in place while they soak. Pretty simple and straightforward. Now, treat. We are going to create a solution of borax and boric acid. That's borax 20 mule team borax, which is, you know, a laundry detergent additive that uh, boosts cleaning and removes stains. Uh, the instructions say that we need, the recipe online that I found says uh, 0.9 kilograms of borax, which is almost two gallons which is pretty much a full cup of this right here. Yeah. Mix. 0.9 kilograms of borax with 0.6 kilograms of boric acid. And that comes out to a little, roughly a pound, a little bit more, 1.3 pounds, if my math is right, which isn't always. So that's, and I'm no genius. I'm not the one who came up with these ratios. Uh, I will have a link in the comments below for this. Uh, the reason we have this much to three gallons, 3.5 gallons, uh, people smarter than me figured out that this is the ratio that will most fully dissolve into that much water. So the borax, boric acid solution is mildly toxic and I stress mildly. Uh, again, these are used around the house. They're fairly common household ingredients. Uh, you're not gonna wanna drink the solution when we're finished with it, but at the same time, you don't wanna go drinking hydrogen peroxide either. The important thing is that it is extremely toxic to insects. Now, we mix in three gallons of water, warm water, I suppose it doesn't necessarily need to be warm water, but uh, warm water is going to dissolve the borax and the boric acid a lot more quickly than cold water. 
And we're only doing three gallons here because my bucket only holds three gallons. So it's a little bit wasteful on the borax and boric acid that aren't going to dissolve in. But you know, it is what it is. Okay, so we have this funnel. I'm going to slip it right in here. And at this point we're going to take the borax solution and pour it right on in uh, without trying to spill as much as possible. It's glugging in there. Just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. That one's full. Now we go on to the next. Now you may be thinking, okay, Jamie, this is all fine and dandy for the folks in California and Florida where bamboo weevils are a threat. Um, most of the rest of the country doesn't have bamboo weevils. Well, that's true, except for the fact that the bamboo weevils are expanding. I mean, there's bamboo, there's native bamboo in the Americas, and there are exotic bamboos that are planted throughout the South and throughout the Southwest. So the range of these weevils is constantly expanding. And, you know, we can be pretty sure that at some point in the future, they're gonna be wherever bamboo is, including here in Texas. But even before then, um, this borax, uh, boric acid solution is not just proof against uh, bamboo weevils. Um, it's also proof against powder post beetles, which we've got a lot of them here in Texas, and other uh, wood boring insects. So even if you don't have bamboo weevils, it's a good idea to treat your bamboo to protect them against these insects before you have an infestation because after you have an infestation, you know, that's too late. Once we have our bamboo combs topped up with our solution, we need to let them sit for a week to two weeks, which is a long time, but uh, we want the solution to soak into the wood of the bamboo. So if insects burrow into it, they're gonna be getting a good dose of it and it will prevent an infestation. So to prevent evaporation over that period, we're gonna cover the bamboo with plastic wrap, cling wrap, and just tape it into position. And that will significantly reduce evaporation. Now, every few days, you're going to want to come and check it. Uh, and top it off. So it continues to stay full and continues to soak in at the maximum rate. And now we wait for one to two weeks and let the magic of borax do its thing. All right, so it's been about a week for me since I don't really have any serious issues with mites, bamboo mites. I'm gonna say that's it and pull it down and topping it off and Let's see, just drain it all out. Uh, I've seen online that people who use a lot, make a lot of bamboo, process it this way, have a spike set on a plate on the ground that they 
use it to jam that bottom node to open it up and drain it out. But since I'm not uh, doing that kind of volume, we'll just go with this. Uh, I have no sitting it out in the sun. It should have been in the shade, but mine was in the bright sun. It's bleached out and turned tan almost all of this green comb, except for these parts that were backed up against the fence and protected from the sunlight. But this bamboo should now be resistant to insect attacks of all kinds. And the only thing left to do now is torch it and get it ready for use. And now we come to the part everyone's been looking forward to, the torching of the bamboo. Uh, unfortunately, because I took so long between harvest and torch, uh, not to mention the fact that when they were soaking in the borax solution, they were exposed to the sun, this means that the green comb has bleached to be practically indistinguishable from the dried comb. Um, going to show you the difference because you want the green bamboo. When you're torching a green comb of bamboo, there is a dramatic color change once the chemical reaction, the, the temperature reaction has happened with the fire. You can watch and the green changes almost instantaneously. It's like flipping a switch. It goes from green to tan, boom, boom, boom. It's almost pixelated. And this is, you know, a fascinating trait of bamboo when it is still moist and green and it, the resin comes up very easily uh, to the surface. It's liquid, then you rub it down with a rag. Working with green bamboo is so much easier than working with the brown stuff. So that's what torching a green comb of bamboo looks like. But what if you don't have a green comb of bamboo? Well, we're in luck because I've got two brown combs right here and I'm going to show you exactly what it's like when you torch a brown comb. As you can see, the color change is uh, significantly different with the dry bamboo. Uh, it's also instantaneous, but instead of going from green to tan, letting you know the thermal reaction has worked its magic, uh, you go from tan to scorched. If you are looking to torch bamboo very dark, then this is probably the way to go. But if you want to have an even tan look to your bamboo, then this is uh, problematic. It's challenging to get an even distribution of color because even the slightest hesitation while you're applying heat will result in dark scorch marks. Uh, you can end up with very splotchy bamboo. The resin does not come to the surface. Uh, your bamboo is dried out, so there is less uh, water to boil and force the resin up. Therefore, wiping it down doesn't really do anything. In, in my opinion, Working with dry bamboo is just a lot more trouble than working with green bamboo. And I will use dry bamboo if it's available and that's all that's available. But if I have my choice, if I have the option, I will opt for using green bamboo all the time. It's almost idiot proof. It's like color by numbers. When you see the color change go, then you're, you've done and you can move on. The water content within the bamboo uh, resists scorching. The water will boil off before the wood burns. Um, it just gives you more options. It's more built-in safety nets. And, you know, I, th I think you can easily see the difference here. So, there you have it. How to deal with bamboo from harvest to torching and everything in between. I hope you've learned something from this episode. Uh, certainly if you live in an area where bamboo weevils are an issue, uh, you're absolutely gonna wanna treat your bamboo with borax solution to make sure you don't get an infestation. And uh, you know, it's great. I mean, bamboo is the primary ingredient for any tiki bar build. And if you have the 
uh, access to it, the ability to get it, uh, work it yourself, then by all means do so. It'll save you a lot of money. Uh, you develop a lot of skills and that bamboo work in your tiki bar is all yours. And you can really take pride in craftsmanship when you go from harvest to putting it up and everything in between. So until next time from the Lagoon of Mystery, Aloha. Thank you.